Managing Lennox Gastaut syndrome really represents a challenge. And the number one challenge is to individualize treatment. Each one of the kids with Lennox Gastaut syndromes and the adults will have a very unique set of problems, different etiology, multiple seizure types, maybe one is more frequent than other. So the challenges are really many. The polymorphism of different seizure types and the type of etiology for what is the cause of the Lennox Gastaut syndrome really needs to be taken into consideration when choosing any treatment modalities. As I look at the patient with Lennox Gastaut syndrome, I will never be able to treat unless I take care of the cognitive aspect, the behavior aspect, and of course the seizure syndrome. The principles that guide us to treat patients with Lennox Gastaut syndrome are many. Number one, the seizures are very difficult to treat. So sometimes you have to make a choice. Do I give them extra medicine and make them tired, dizzy, not able to get out of bed? Or do we settle for having clusters of smaller seizures that are not going to interfere with their daily activities? And this is a negotiation that has to occur with the family, the caregivers, and, and making a decision as to what is too much and what is an acceptable side effect really is very unique for each individual patient. Often, we need to combine medication. So taking into consideration, is this medicine going to increase the level of the other one? Or the same, taking away one inducer medication may increase the level of the other drug and indeed cause a major problem and we end up with a very complex polypharmacy. So you really have to understand the pharmacokinetic interactions of these drugs when you start to in engage in this complex polypharmacy. Rescue medicines, when can we use rescue medicine? What is an appropriate timeline? What do we accept as the regular cluster versus something that we have to intervene? And I'm gonna to try to parade you through my way of thinking when I manage a patient with Lennox Gastaut syndrome. Overtreatment is always a problem because we are trained and we're always pursuing that goal of no seizures. But with Lennox Gastaut syndrome, you have to understand what you're treating is that polymorphism of different seizure type, cognitive problems, and you really have to make a good balance there. Tonic seizures are often the predominant seizure type and they tend to be very difficult to treat. And you may always see a cluster in the mornings, which is the most common time for these clusters of seizures and you may not need to give very extensive or large amounts of medications. There's always the transient effect of medication when you start. So be mindful of those medicines that you have to readjust either because they have tolerance or because they need an adjustment for auto induction later on. So this is it. The treatment goal for Lenos Gastaut is good quality of life, reduction of seizures, and of course preventing all kinds of injuries. So when I looked at the first drug, second drug, and when do I start looking at what else can we do different than pharmacokinetic, the pharmacological treatment of the seizures, then I start engaging in family meetings and deciding where do we look at next or where do we go next. So the number one selection criteria for the first drug is what is the seizure type now? The kids may present, as we discussed earlier, with West syndrome, the infantile spasm, and there are certain drugs that are more unique for that seizure type. If the onset of seizures is really with generalized tonic, clonic seizures, you may not need to use ACTH or Vigabatrin, which are drugs that are very unique for specific seizure types at presentation. Looking at the second choice, what is the best drug that we can combine with the first drug, or are we looking at another monotherapy trial? And as we go to the third combination trial or monotherapy trial, we like to start looking at other type of treatments, ketogenic diet, vagal nerve stimulator, surgery, and that's what is on your other side of the screen, looking again to get to that good quality of life in treating epilepsy in the Lennox Gastaut syndrome. Drug development for Lennox Gastaut, it's very unique because there is no one single animal model 
that will help us develop drugs specific for this syndrome. It is a syndrome, which means it's a constellation of symptoms that will include multiple etiologies, multiple seizure types, and all the behavior aspects of it. So that's always a challenge when we develop drugs for lennox gastaut syndrome. It is very difficult to do a monotherapy trial for lennox gastaut syndrome because of the multiple seizure types and the severity of the seizures, the frequent non-convulsive status. So it is mostly developing drugs with combination therapy and very often drugs that are there for a long time or very high doses and you add a third drug or a second drug that it may not truly tell us what is going to be the behavior because it's such a complex polypharmacy. So this is what I call the dimensions of or the aspects of treating, managing patients with lennox gastaut syndrome. Quality of life at the center, then is the comorbidities. You're looking at comorbidities of what is the primary pathology? Is this a, a, a child with TS? Is this a child with a developmental problem? Is this a person that had a severe uh, anoxic encephalopathy? So all those uh, etiologies may represent a different challenge. We're looking here at the cognitive decline. We're watching someone deteriorate and we want to stop that progression. But by doing so, we, we want to be very careful that it's not going to be caused by the side effects of the medicines that were given this patient. The psychosocial aspect, aggression, the ability to stay in the classroom, the ability to stay with the babysitter, all those things do represent a major aspect of managing patients with lenox gastaut. So I'm going to review some of the drugs that we use often in lenox gastaut syndrome. Valproic acid has been a favor, but we don't have a single trial that look at lenox gastaut patients using valproic acid. It was never done in monotherapy. It's very often in the mix when we do clinical trials for newer drugs now. There are um, many concerns with the younger patient when they start using the, uh, the valproic acid managing the liver function test, and it's something that we all see in the pediatric population, and then very often these patients continue on to the adult life using valproic acid. New generation drugs like lamotrigine, topamax, clobosam, um, felbamate have been studied in clinical trials, add-on trials for seizures associated with lenox gastaut syndrome. So when I say that, is that there are many diff different seizure types that will be measured during that clinical trial, and we have at least more data, more uh, information to guide us through that. Benzodiazepines, they've been from early on in the treatment of lenox gastaut syndrome, we've been using benzodiazepines. They tend to be very effective for the tonic seizures. They are also being uh, used uh, quite um, often for rescue medication. And most recently, we've had a clinical trial that where the clobosam, which is one of the benzodiazepines, that is very effective in the treatment of the uh, atonic seizures. And it's very been a great addition to the armamentarium. When we look at the benzodiazepine, we also want to look at side effects like sedation. And clobosam seems to be one of the benzodiazepines that are, is not going to be as sedating. It's um, also available in multiple strengths, so we can titrate it slowly. And for younger patients, we can um, have a very um, unique uh, dose schedule. Felbamate. We really have to talk about felbamate when we talk about the lenox gastaut syndrome. This was a significant development in uh, treating lenox gastaut syndrome, effective drug, but with side effects of aplastic anemia and liver toxicity. So the family has to consent and be very aware that the only way we can use felbamate is by choosing the right patient that can be um, monitored with liver function tests and complete blood cell count to prevent any uh, aplastic anemia and liver toxicity. So the treatment algorithm goes like this. First drug, second do dro dose, start looking at the third drug for other things. And I'm going to parade you through the next uh, session of management, which includes surgery, ketogenic diet, and the vagal nerve stimulator. 
So when we look at the vagal nerve stimulator um, and the immunotherapy, those are great additions, but it's not for everyone. You have to look at the selection of what patient is going to be good for this type of treatment. So the epilepsy surgery evaluation includes the video monitoring, includes the a, a good imaging uh, study, many ways to look at imaging in epilepsy, but there are very big challenges in, in resective surgery for lenox gastaut syndrome. The number one challenge is that they are often multifocal. It's not one spot. Uh, we said um, is part of a very complex uh, etiology umbrella, and very often it's not just focal epilepsy. It is very common to see lenox gastaut originating from frontal origins, regional origins, and epilepsy resective surgery is not an option. So corpus callosotomy presents a good surgical option to prevent drops, to prevent injuries, and often it's helpful in, in helping to prevent status epilepticus. It is not always uh, for long term, it may uh, recur, and the anterior two-thirds of the corpus callosum surgery, it's um, often the initial way to do it. Vagal nerve stimulator is a therapy that we use to prevent seizures. It's a generator, it has a coil with a vagal nerve um, impulse that will help to prevent seizures. It is very similar um, to any other pacemaker. This one is set all the time, it is not on demand. There are three components, and that's the generator, the coil that is to the vagus nerve, and the device that we use from outside to regulate or titrate the dosing of the different parameters that we can use to help with the seizure control and also to prevent side effects. The number one way to do it is to start very slow with the titration of the current and then to increase according to the way the patient is tolerating. You can do that in the office and wait until the patient is able to tolerate the side effects well. The parameters are many. The length of the stimulation, the amount of current delivered, the amount of current delivered by the magnet, all that can be modified and titrated according to tolerability. Ketogenic diet. So the diet, it's really a unique way of looking at treatment of seizures. And a lot of my patients would like to see, is there anything I can do with the diet that can help control the seizures without giving more chemicals? So this is sort of the reverse of what we consider our Mediterranean diet. The idea is that by doing the ketogenic diet, we are shifting the carbohydrate metabolism to a more a fat base metabolism. And there are different theories of how it works by creating ketones, and that becomes the source of energy for the brain. It is used in different modalities. In my um, algorithm, I looked at the diet as a supplement to the medications. It is often used in addition to medicine. It can be used with the stimulator. It can be used early on, or it can, it, for some families, it becomes the last a resource because it is a big commitment from the family. The results of the diet varied according to how well the family is able to, to follow. And I have a very important way of looking at this low carb ketogenic diet can also be a modified Atkin diet. And some of my adult patients benefit from this modification of low carb going more to the, the high fat, and they can help the control of the seizures for Lenox Gastaut by adding a diet control to the whole sort of armamentarium. Non-convulsive status is very common in the treatment of Lenox Gastaut. So a big challenge is when we change medicines, we have to be very careful because it's often uh, subclinical or subacute, but you have to be very suspicious about non-convulsive status when someone is having a major change in mental status, they're not able to engage in the normal activities. It is indeed a medical emergency. So when we look at the tips, always simplify the regimen. It's very important to not keep adding different medicines. The medication selection, target the seizure type that is more frequent or more dangerous. That's a real important clue because otherwise you'll be 
dealing with a very complex polypharmacy. The medication changes often require hospitalization. Do it slowly because the incidence of non-convulsive status. Always keep in mind the cognitive, cognitive impairment. It's really key here. Looking at the comprehensive care, you must include the behavioral aspect. Treat the aggression, treat the behavioral problems. Very often that translates more to quality of life for the parents and also for the, the child and the adult. Where is the patient care for? That uh, is to me as important as the treatment of a different seizure type. Treatment options that are newer may have better side effects, less sedation, and may represent a better alternative to older drugs. Look at the management of Lenos Gasto as a comprehensive care, seizure type, comorbidity, drug selection, and please keep in mind that the family is very much part of this.